Welcome to Yingcast, our podcast for current and future leaders wanting to develop themselves further. Every month, the Alembic team discuss and share their thoughts on issues and topics that are common in the workplace. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Yingcast. This episode will be covering the topic of efficiency. That's our marketing theme for this month. Um, and I suppose Yingcast being a bit more reflective, we wanted to think about, okay, increased efficiency. What does that mean for me? How do I get there? We also wanted to link to our previous marketing theme of motivation and productivity. So we'll be discussing that as well on this episode. Today on the podcast, we have Matt. Hi there. And Rosanna. Hello, everybody. To start off, we've been discussing it within Alembic ourselves. And something that kept coming up was the job market. Um, and how, Matt, you might have to correct me on this, but I think um, there's a statistic out there that says there's one million job vacancies um, and there's also one million people looking for work. I suppose that made us ask a few questions. Is it that people are um, bored? Are they burning out? Is it the volatile or sometimes uncertain environment? Um, that's been created largely by the pandemic. So I guess that could link to our previous theme of motivation for people knowing what's important to them and what motivates them is their current role fulfilling that. Um, And I suppose a question to you both, does motivation tie into how efficient and productive we are? Yeah, I think it's a really nice lead on from our last um, Ian Carter asked on motivation because I think if we're thinking about efficiency and we're thinking about productivity we're thinking about performance and what we know from motivation is that the more motivated you are the more likely you are to to perform now obviously there's other variables in that which is skill level and the other environmental factors but motivation is quite a big driver for uh, performance but it doesn't necessarily on its own make you more efficient um and that's why i think it's quite a good start point is motivation levels but i think actually uh, the question of how can, can i'm motivated but how can i be more efficient is probably quite a, a common feeling and quite a common frustration maybe for some people about feeling or, or not feeling efficient or not feeling productive um i think that's quite a common feeling that um, people have at work yeah, I've definitely experienced that with people as well. And um, in fact, I'm sure I've probably experienced that myself. I think efficiency is a is a really difficult one. It's um, it's felt just like motivation. You may feel it uh, after you finish doing something and think, goodness, that was a terribly inefficient way of doing that. Um, and it is something like motivation that you do need to work on. There can be loads of different factors which feed into how an individual might be efficient. And you probably have days where you jump out of bed, you hit maximum efficiency by the time you've had your breakfast and you have an incredible morning and you do the same exact thing the next day and achieve almost nothing. Um, People really struggle sometimes to capture what it is that is different between the two days and doing work on how you can be more efficient, make the most of those really high energy times, and what you can do to try and move out of your low energy, low efficiency, um, and into what we call being in flow. Yeah, it takes a bit of work. It takes a bit of analysis and breakdown. I mean, I I, I definitely agree with what you're saying, Matt. I think for me, there were sort of two parts to this. One is about discipline, and we talk about discipline and practice and routine quite a lot and then the other thing is about thinking about your energy um and you know really taking ownership of that you were just saying you know you get a feeling of oh that wasn't as efficient as i I could have been or could have been more productive there actually taking that thought and rather than going oh i'll just do better next time or it's done now it's over a few 
actually go back in and lean into that problem and go and you know ask yourself why and think about the one the discipline of that and two what was changing in your environment and your energy levels that meant that you know it would have been different on a different day as you as you suggest i think we have to be disciplined and i think we have to take ownership of what triggers us and maybe affects our energy in a positive or negative way i think it's become such an important point particularly i know we had the, the point about the the job market at the start but we talk to clients all the time who are struggling with hiring or they have limited number uh, limited amount of resource to work with and they're looking to achieve an exit or they're looking to grow um, and they need you know, they need additional output and might not have lots of additional budget or capability to bring people into the business and um, to deliver on that and this is where you know productivity um, and efficiency become so important you can get a, a percentage increase in efficiency and through your organization if you can achieve that with a number of people you can make up your extra headcount but yeah as you say it is a, it is a discipline to work through the process of getting to that um, and it can it can be a difficult conversation to have it doesn't necessarily have to come with a, a negative slant on it uh, you need to do more work i need to see more delivery from you um, it can be, and this is you know, something we've talked about at Alembic before, it can be a positive thing. Culturally, how can we improve our efficiency? Um, what are the things that we're doing that we could do less of if we want to deliver more of X, Y, or Z? And I think having that as part of your strategy, while it can sometimes be overlooked, particularly now, is just really relevant and important. I definitely agree with that. I just want to come on to the next point because I think it links quite nicely to what we've been saying is about um, thinking about and reflecting on I suppose our, ourselves what that efficiency is like what does it look like what does it feel like I think Rosanna you're also saying sort of what does it sound like you know tapping into each of those different areas of it to understand what that really is for us and I think, Rosanna, you were saying as well earlier, just how it's, you know, we're each responsible for that. Um, and it's so important to know what that looks like in the moment rather than, as we were saying, maybe after it's happened, whether you were efficient or not. Yeah. I mean, like, you might feel random. Or it might not feel random. You might you might have quite good granularity and quite good self awareness on you know um, you know managing your energy and ultimately managing your efficiency. I suppose it's actually just asking yourself. You know, if you think about the most efficient version of yourself, uh, the most productive version of yourself, where are you? What are you doing? What were you doing before? What are you going to do afterwards? um and um it's quite environmental so really thinking about how you can prepare yourself and these are sort of like basic basic things so making sure that you're well hydrated um if you're feeling that slump often um you know there's a mid-afternoon slump you know are you what are you doing to sort of re-energize yourself um exercise is a great thing so just walking around in the afternoons good for you going outside um you know being in nature is really good for your negative ions it helps manage your positive energy um other things that around you that might you know in the external environment you know some people sap energy from you all of these things affect your energy levels and in turn affect the way that you can you know turn up and be efficient the other thing I was just going to say, though, is efficiency isn't always about moving quickly. And so actually being in the right sort of energy state sometimes allows you to go, actually, we need to slow down here because we're rushing and going quickly. Are we more likely to make a mistake here? And actually just slowing down and using some reflection um, which isn't led by the emotions or the urgency or the sort of impulsivity and patience, but just being really um, clear on when to go quickly and when to slow down. And I think that's a conscious thing. So 
allow, you know, not allowing your emotions to sort of lead the pace that you're at. There's a classic uh, thing of, I can only work to deadlines. That's quite emotionally led. You, you know, you're working quicker because that's an emotional commitment to the deadline. So I suppose, um, is there a way that you can manage your energy so you don't need a deadline, but you can still be efficient and productive? You make a really good point about it being very individual. I was talking to a client this week about this, and they were uh, talk. We were talking about productivity, and it's like you say, everybody is energized in different ways. And we were talking about getting to maximum productivity first thing in the morning. And there are some people who like to what we call swallow the frog. They get good energy from knocking off something which is really big and difficult, the most difficult thing they have to do today. They do that first and that gives them great energy um, and productivity. And there's some people who are the exact opposite and they like to do small tasks which gradually give them a sense of productivity. And then that productivity generates more productivity. So I think there's, there's a really good point you made about kind of knowing, knowing yourself knowing what you're doing when you're being productive, knowing how to generate that, knowing um, the kind of emotional or energy state that you're in, which is low productivity. And there is definitely a point to being in a state which is not your ideal state, you're not in your flow and still getting things done. Uh, I firmly believe that you should, you should be kind on yourself. If you're, you know, you're turned up to work on a Friday after a big night on Thursday, probably know you're not going to be at your best if you can still come in and get you know a good level of work done then fantastic or if you're tired your baby's kept you awake all night um you come and you i smiles on the cameras yes that one's me uh then yeah if you come in and you can turn in a good day of work then amazing it doesn't matter that it's not your most productive state you know maybe tomorrow you will bounce out of bed and feel amazing but there's definitely a balance to be struck and there's definitely uh, marginal gains to be made in all of those different areas, which adds up to a lot. I think as well, there's also a point that Rosanna made um, when we've been speaking about this previously that I think is really important that we note here as well. Rosanna, you said that efficiency doesn't necessarily mean you're doing more. It actually means that you're doing less. Um, but in a better way. To be efficient is, doesn't mean you have to stay up late to get things done, it actually means um, that you have the right processes um, and I guess knowledge of yourself in place um, to be able to get things done. Like you said, Matt, if you're maybe not in the best headspace or um, your energy's a little bit off, you can still deliver. Yeah, I think I just like the idea of just thinking about efficiency as doing, doing, doing less and doing the right things um, as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, it definitely talks to the fact that you can always do more, you can always work for longer, and you can always make your work a higher quality. But at some point, uh, you have a diminishing return on that, and it becomes what you probably describe as unproductive. So I think knowing where that balance is, knowing that you're providing good added value for what you're doing, whether it's for yourself or for your work or a client. Um, and knowing when the right time to stop is, is also a really uh, important point about remaining productive and efficient. I think there's, there's maybe two points to add to that. So this is like a classic 80-20 rule of Pareto's principle of um, getting, you know, 80% of the way there and that being quite efficient way of thinking about it. But I, I suppose we all really value high quality outputs. Um, and this isn't in sacrifice of any customer service or quality. I think what you're touching on, Matt, is around, you know, often um, a trait that we see in ourselves and other people can be this perfectionism. So just the need to keep on going. It's, it's like a perfectionist trait. And so that's hard to experience or it's hard to experience you know the absence of something being perfect 
and I you know that that discomfort of that is probably quite a good signal to to be your signal for stopping maybe because you will cut just keep on going um there'll be aspects of you know my work that I definitely feel like I just want to do a little bit more a little bit more but actually sort of for perfectionism understanding where that sort of um discomfort is and maybe just thinking about that as a signal to you around when to stop because I don't think it's about sacrificing quality I just think it can be about um perfectionism I think it's about scope as well and understanding the scope being sometimes being a perfectionist and going back to it a hundred times is just not you're not fulfilling your brief yeah um, hard to know it's so hard to know yeah good point I think this is probably a good place to summarize and wrap up so what have we discussed we've said that the more motivated you are, um, the more likely you are to perform, um, but that doesn't necessarily make you more efficient. We were saying that it's important to ask yourself how you can be more efficient. It's something that we all need to work on regularly um, so that we feel and we know if we're being efficient in the moment rather than having that pang of guilt afterwards, um, thinking, oh, I didn't need to spend so long on that or uh, could have been more efficient there. Thinking about when you have good days and bad days, efficiency wise, but also, and we spoke quite a lot about energy and how um, the energy we have and how that feeds into how efficient we are. And um, so thinking about what a good day looks like for you and maybe what a not so good day looks like and what are the differences there and practicing that and being really disciplined with ourselves on doing that regularly so that we have this clear picture or clearer picture of what makes us efficient and um, what gives us that great energy. Um, we've also spoken about our, some of our clients that we've been speaking to and how um, at the moment they currently have limited resources, but there's a need for more, producing more. Um, so really highlighting the importance of productivity and efficiency there. And again, we've just said about how efficiency always isn't always about doing things as quickly as possible. It's really about knowing when to get that balance right between making decisions quickly, um, but also slowing down, stepping back and reflecting. Um, Rosanna made a great point about not allowing your emotions to lead the pace you go at. So, um, for example, not just working to deadlines and working on that stress. How can you um, instead thinking about how you can manage your energy? Um, so you don't need a looming deadline to get things done. How do you find that flow and that productivity and that efficiency? Um, and the final point we were talking about was how you can always do more and make your work of a higher quality. But knowing where that tipping point is between providing more quality for the client um, and it actually becoming unproductive um, and maybe not adding value. And we talked a bit about the um, Pareto 80-20 rule. And that need to step away from perfectionism and remembering the scope. Thank you for listening to this episode of Yinkast. Um, we hope that you will join us again soon. We really welcome your feedback and um, what you want us to cover next. Just a reminder that Nick, Matt and Rosanna um, will be hosting our Strategy Cafe, which is our free leadership webinar, for those that don't know, on the 25th of November on the same theme about efficiency. It's called How to Create Something from Nothing, and they'll be discussing how to drive efficiency when you can't hire more people. They'll be sharing their tips on identifying and tackling inefficiencies in your business and how you can go about boosting um, productivity. As always, you can sign up on our website, alembicstrategy.com, under the Get Involved section. We hope to see you there. Finally, keep an eye on our socials and our website for articles from the team on the topic of efficiency, breaking it down into smaller steps to help you get started on your journey towards high efficiency. Thank you for listening to this episode of Yingcast. We hope you enjoyed it. To get the heads up on future podcasts, you can sign up to our mailing list through our website, alembicstrategy.com, in the Get Involved section.
If you enjoyed this, then you might also be interested in our other events. You can sign up to our newsletter for updates on our latest events and articles. Also, look out for Strategy Cafe, our regular leadership webinar, where Nick, our MD, interviews prominent leaders.